Hello. So in this video, uh, we're going to be talking about points of interest, specifically extrema. So I'm going to be going over sort of the geometric perspective of this, primarily because, uh, as it turns out, extrema and sort of analytically uh, sort of determining extrema is really one of the big areas in calculus. And in fact, it was one of the big motivators to invent calculus in the first place. So we simply don't have the analytic tools in this class, nor will we develop them um, to find extrema in most cases. That will be a very large chunk of what you're doing in Calc 1. Nonetheless, we can sort of geometrically discuss them in preparation for calculus. So what do we mean with extrema? So simply, simply put, when we talk about extrema, what we're really talking about are maximums and minimums. But these occur in two sort of types. You have the uh, absolute, otherwise known as global. These are used interchangeably um, versus relative or local, local slash relative. Okay, which again are, are used interchangeably depending on who you're looking at. Um, so, which I guess with the way I wrote them, I should have flipped it because it's absolute usually goes with relative, global usually goes with local, but that's fine. So let's look at an example because again, this is geometric what we're talking about. We're going to be looking at these things. So let's just take a, again a, a random curve, my sort of go to weird looking curve. So maximums and minimums are exactly what you would think. Um, they are sort of the biggest and smallest values in some sense. So when we talk about absolute or global, um, let's say max, this is the highest point on the graph. Now there's sort of a, a key subtle point to be made here, which is that it is a point on the graph, meaning this really does have to be an actual point. It can't be something like infinity. That's not a point on the graph, right? Likewise, if you have um, some discontinuity thing, like we're going to talk about in the next video, you can't have a uh, maximum that is sort of like a hole or something that is, a, that is discontinuous at that point and not existent at that point because it needs to be on the graph. So if we look at this thing here, um, again, from a sort of geometric view, right, a non-analytic, non-precise view, just looking at the graph, then my absolute global max, it would be something like up here, right? So this would be... So let me say mark a few things here, A, B, C, D. So my absolute max would be point B. Where really this is you know, some x comma y point, but it's that part of the graph is my absolute max. And that's because if I look sort of anywhere else on the graph, which you'll note there's no arrows, I've truncated the graph. So if I look anywhere else, it's not past that. That is the tallest point on the graph. And that's why it's the absolute or global max. Likewise, if I did the absolute or global min, again, it's the same idea, the lowest point. And again, I will stress this, point on the graph, right? So again, it has to be something that is actually there that you can point to and go, that point right there, that one specifically, okay? So if I look at my example here, um, I want the thing that's sort of lower than all the rest. Well, here I have something that is lower than the rest. So this would be point C. 
Okay. Uh, now let's do relative or local max. So this is uh, a point, again, point on the graph. Sensing a theme here that is the highest of all, I'm going to put this in quotes, nearby points. So what do I mean when I say nearby? What I mean is if I take some sort of small segment, some small interval near that point, it's going to be the biggest thing within that interval. So if I look at, for example, B, and I look at sort of all the points nearby, B is still the largest point there. So point B is also a local max. It's a global max. It's also a local max. And this should usually be the case. If we have something that is a global maximum, then taking some nearby piece, right? if it's bigger than everything, it's bigger than what's immediately right nearby. So it's also going to be local. With the way I have drawn things, if I look at D and look at sort of all the points nearby, which is sort of just to the left, D is the biggest point in that interval. And so point D is also a local max. I'm going to pause here and say, this is another one of those things like zero being a natural number that gets a surprising amount of, let's say, vigorous debate among math people. Um, some calculus teachers do not like using endpoints as local maxes. Some do. I am of the opinion that endpoints count as local maxes. That being said, not even all the calculus teachers at UF agree. And so when you go to calculus, you should ask whether or not they want to count uh, endpoints as maximums or minimums. Usually it's very clear in their teaching material, but make sure you know where they land, because it will depend based on who you have for calculus as to whether or not they count that. Everybody agrees that an endpoint can be a global max if it's otherwise the largest point or a global min if it's otherwise the lowest point, but the local relative is, is often debated, let's say. Okay. And I'm sure you will know if I did, instead of max, if I did a min, it would be the highest or lowest. So in particular, for the same reasoning, the absolute min, it's the smallest there is, so it's going to be small in that neighborhood as well. So the absolute min is also going to be a local min. But just like D was a maximum, A is sort of the smallest point in the interval at that endpoint. So A is also, in this class, a local or relative min. Okay. Now, the thing to keep in mind, there's, some, there's a couple of things about sort of language that are important here. Um, so one, I'm just going to sort of note these. Uh, the max or min uh, refer to the output value. So if I ask, what is the absolute maximum? I expect a number back, 17. If I ask where is the absolute maximum, that would be an x value, or even a point, depending on the context of the question. So max min itself, if I say what is the max, that's referring to just the value. But I could also ask where is it, and that would refer to the point or possibly the x value, depending on, again, the exact uh, phrasing of the question, which, again, should be clear in context if you look for it.
I say this first because this next one is sort of misleading without keeping track of this, which is that the max uh, absolute absolute max min are unique, meaning I can only have one absolute maximum and one absolute minimum in the sense that that max and min are the values. I can only have one maximum value that I attain because if I attain a five and a seven, seven is bigger than five, so the real maximum is seven, right? The absolute max. So there's an absolute, there is one absolute max, one absolute min value, but they can be located in more than one x value on the graph. Meaning, <clears throat> so here I have one graph example, but if I had for another, ooh, that was a bad sound. If I had for another one, um, so again, a classic example, which we unfortunately aren't doing in this class, but classic example would be something like a sine function. Um, so I'm gonna draw the, the graph, but you don't have to worry about it um, in terms of, wow. If I could draw, I would draw the graph. Oh boy. Something like this. And so there's one maximum value that is attained, which is the value one. But I attain it in more than one place, because this is also the value one. And so these points are both global maximums or absolute maximums in the sense that they are both locations where those maximums occur, but they're still only the one maximum value, the value one, right? So if this is, uh, for sine, I guess this would be uh, pi over two, and this would be like, what, negative three pi over two. So it would, it would uh, appear at both of these spots. Likewise, excuse me, um, there is more than one place where the absolute or global minimum would occur, right? So this would be at three pi over two and at negative pi over two. The values aren't important, because um, like I said, we're not doing sine functions, we're not doing trig in this class. I'm just demonstrating a type of function um, where you could have more than one point that, have the, that are global maximums. Even though the maximum value, there's only one value that is attained, the value one and the value negative one for the minimum, you can, you can attain it in multiple places as long as it's the same value. Okay, so I know I'm harping on this, but this is sort of one of those things that usually gets a lot of people confused. The max and min are unique in the sense that there's only one global max, one global min value that is attained, but you can attain it in multiple places. And so if they say, where is this, you know, where is the absolute maximum, you could have a bunch of points listed there because they all attain that maximum, okay? Um, Likewise, uh, endpoints in this class can be relative local extrema. So extrema is what we say when we mean max or min, right? So they can, can be local uh, relative extrema in this class. I recognize not everybody agrees with this. I would feel happy to argue the point with them, but they're not gonna come argue with me, so I'm just letting you know, so when you move forward, you're not ambushed by this. Um, but everybody agrees that, um, that they can be global or absolute extrema. And this is true for all classes. Okay, there's no ambiguity there. Okay. So again, uh, as mentioned at the very beginning, we don't have nor will we develop the tools to do this analytically. So what you wanna be able to do is look at a graph and point out you know, where is the 
point, uh, or, you know, where on this graph are all of the local and uh, global maximums, where are all the local and global minimums, how about on this graph, any graph that you're given, okay? All right, so with that, that is extrema. Um, this is made a little more complicated by uh, the discontinuities, which is what we're gonna talk about next, okay? So the, the premise is still the same, but discontinuities can make it look a little weird.